Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living and today I'd like to talk to you about how to properly clean rods when you're doing a repat or an overhaul or if you just want to do a clean oil adjust or if you just need to clean a particular rod on a saxophone. Um, now this saxophone, as you may be able to tell from how shiny it is, is a fresh overhaul from somewhere. I don't know where, don't really care. Um, but a lot of t uh, some of the business that I do is actually like People will bring in fresh overhauls from somewhere or recent overhauls from somewhere and have me do a little bit of tidying up. Um, and it's pretty common. And one of the things I see again and again and again is dirty rods. Now, I've taken a lot of this saxophone apart because it's actually got really, really dirty rods and there's a lot of issues. There was some binding. Um, and uh, unfortunately, this is not that uncommon. But what I want to talk about today, particularly, is the cleaning of the rods. Because this was an overhaul. Um, it got cleaned, right? It got shined up, at least. But the rods are all really dirty. And if I just, I mean, this is probably going to come off pretty dirty. Let's see. Um, and that's going to give us a little bit of indication of what we're going to find when I open this up. Now, I haven't taken this rod apart, but I have taken others apart on this horn. And, like, two out of three of them were filthy. Um, and I don't know why that is on so many fresh overhauls. Uh, maybe it's just because it's not immediately apparent, like, how to clean it. And once you put it back together, I think a lot of people don't take it back apart again. Um, but... You can take instruments apart, and or saxophones, you know, that are well overhauled apart, and put them back together and not have any, like, you know, negative effects, really. Like, the pads do still seal. I remember when I first started out, I was kind of scared of that, but it turns out it's really not that big of an issue if, you know, you've straightened your rods, if the keys are decently fit, if your pad seats are decent, you know, unless the overhaul itself has some sort of serious foundational issues, you can take things apart. Um, and then put them back together. Now, I'm gonna get a clean paper towel, or half of one anyways, um, and I'm gonna take this rod out here. Why are you sticky? Well, that's probably, that's not a good sign. So already you can see right I mean that's pretty bad news so I'm gonna take my naphtha dispenser these are made by Menda um, and I'm gonna dispense a little bit of naphtha onto this paper towel here and let's see what we got oh goodness gracious yep so that's what's coming off the rod in a freshly overhauled saxophone um, and as you can see, more comes off the threads. One of the spots I think that people miss is the threads because, um, you know, you can wipe it down and there's still, like, black stuff in there. Um, so I'm going to show you how I clean rods when I'm doing an overhaul. And when I get overhaul stuff back in, you know, years later for clean oil adjusts... Oh, and actually, I wonder if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah, there it is, shining in the middle there. There's actually a few metal flakes in here. So, I mean, you know, I talk about how oil can become an abrasive if it's not clean. Um, there is a pretty clear indication of it. Uh, and, you know, even if that didn't come from being wiped off, you know, inside the horn by that gritty oil, that particular piece of metal there is actually going to do some damage over a long period of time. <sighs> so, um, first step is to, you know, take it out of the horn and use naphtha and just wipe the rods down okay and that's step one this is not we're not done here <laughs> so i'm going to take this rod and just set it over here for now next we're going to take these keys off and you're going to see some more nastiness okay so like on the ends there right like all that needs to come off so we wipe that down on both sides Okay, and we'll do that for all of these keys. Gotta be careful when you're handling them not to like accidentally touch those parts and then put grease or oil all over the rest of the key. Hopefully you guys can see this. Doing work with like the camera in between me and my workbench is like always a little bit difficult. 
Okay. So once that's clean, the next thing we do is we take a pipe cleaner and we soak both ends with naphtha. And the reason why is we'll take the first end and put it inside the hinge tube, work it back and forth, and then push it through. And this end, if it comes out clean, like that, then we know we've actually gotten all the dirt on here, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and clip that off, soak the end again, and do the same thing to this key. And then we pull it through, clean, so we know that one's clean. And then we'll snip it again. Do this one. Came through clean, okay. Could probably do the last piece on it and then this, this pipe cleaner will be done. And again, this is not my overhaul. This is not what my work looks like. Okay, it came out a little bit dirty, so I'm actually gonna take one more pipe cleaner. And everything looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna set those aside. Now the next thing we do, let's take our paper towel we were using, soak it again and rub the ends of the posts. Clean those off. I think I'm actually going to also just get around the edges here pipe cleaner. Now also I'm not washing the body here because I'm not taking it apart so we're just doing the part. Typically my overhaul procedure is I disassemble the horn and then I do this and then I wash it and then I run a pipe cleaner through one more time. But um, we can get pretty good results like this too. So then I'm going to take, this is the threaded post, right? I'm actually going to like kind of screw it into it see how much stuff is coming out lots of stuff gets trapped in those threads and I think things get screwed in and out even if you clean these rods right um, you know if you pushing this end through first right and there's oil in there I think this stuff getting dragged along the rest is really what does the majority of making things dirty after people think it's clean so let's do that one again with a bit more naphtha See where we're at. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way. Okay, now I'm able to screw that in and out and it's coming out pretty clean, right? So, and there's actually a bonus to doing it twice because it'll drop some hair and you'll pick it up on the second run through. Okay, so set that aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is clean the rod. All right, so you put it in your bench motor and you take some really fine grit sandpaper, 1200 will do, and basically polish the rod. And we'll take this out, flip it around, and you can see the difference if it'll focus. There you go. I'll flip it around. And if my bench motor looks weird, it's because it's actually an old lathe. And I use collets uh, because they squeeze more evenly. It's a kind of expensive solution, but do this job over time. You acquire this stuff, and it does do a better job. It doesn't mar the rod. Okay, then the last thing I do before taking it out is mount it up and I use a steel wire brush. Oops. You could use bronze too if you wanted to. Um, brass probably 
wouldn't be strong enough or would wear down really quick. actually got let's see clean threads and finally so this is just out of the bench motor take some more naphtha and wipe it down one last time and you can see more stuff comes off right And for the threads, I try to like get my fingernail in there and kind of like actually like screw it out with like my fingernail as a thread. And you can see you get like a tiny bit more of the grit come out. Okay, so now the insides of the posts are clean. The face of the posts are clean. The threaded portion of the post is clean. The threaded portion of the rod is clean. The rod itself is clean. Um, on this one looks like actually okay, so sometimes you'll have to Clean out the slot and what I do is usually I actually take like one of my little wrappers from my razor blade And just pull it through like a saw Usually it does a pretty good job of cleaning out the slot. Then we'll do the naphtha thing again. Okay. So, posts are clean, rod is clean, keys are clean both on the ends and on the inside. And sometimes those pipe cleaners will leave like little hairs in there um, and you gotta blow those out. The ones I use, have bristles in them like these red things are actually like plastic bristles they're made by bj long um and i haven't found any that are better i think they're actually like specifically for cleaning um like smoking pipes so they're pipe cleaners like for real um but here we are so that's all clean now and here's all the stuff that came out and that wasn't as bad as I see. I mean, that was not as good as it should be, given that it was an overhaul. But it's not as bad as I see. So the next thing we'll do is we'll reassemble this with some oil. And then we'll take it out and we'll see if it comes out clean or not. So here's, oopsie daisy, here's my oil, which you can see is clean, clear. And I'm just going to quickly blow out the, if there's any hairs that got dropped. And we are going to reassemble this. Now the way I oil things is like this. Put it on the top where the rod's going in, just a little bit. Each, I use the thickest oil I possibly can that doesn't slow down the key work. My thinking being, thicker it is, the less likely it is to actually like come out. Okay, I'm sorry for my hands being in the way. Another thing I do is up to just pull off a little piece of my glove. I did. Okay. Another thing I do is I'll put like a little bit of oil on the rod up here. You gotta be aware of it and be ready to wipe it off at the end. But as that goes in, that helps, you know, that means all the oil doesn't just get pushed down to the bottom, right? You actually do drag in some from the top. going in a lot smoother than it did before. I feel like probably, I bet what if I turn these? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's binding, but maybe it's inside a post. It just doesn't feel as loose as I'd like. So I'll go back over that, but I think that's a mechanical issue. Um, whoops, and let me clean off the end of my driver. 
and we'll screw it in. Yeah, that, is that the spring holding that? But anyways, I'm gonna move this stuff just a little bit. Yeah, and that should fall, right? The fact that it's not, it's like a little bit binding. So there's a me mechanical issue in here that I need to address. These seem okay. But the bar key, I bet it's twisted a little bit. Because that rod looks straight when we had it in the bench motor. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and take this back out. And for the moment of truth, let's see if this is actually clean. But before I do it, let me get all my dirty stuff out of the way. Okay. And get a new clean piece of paper towel that we will put some naphtha on and wipe this down and see what comes off. And I bet it'll be like, probably not all the way clear, but really, really, really close to it. I mean, the oil itself kind of darkens a paper towel, but okay, that looks already a lot different than it did the first time. And let's wipe off that oil and see how much schmutz comes with it. There we go, just a tiny bit. Honestly, I wish I'd done better. I feel like I missed something. But that is a much cleaner rod. And yeah, like I said, I feel like, did I miss something? Or is that just the color of the oil? But there we go. So I feel like that is the minimum, right? This saxophone was not actually like cleaned. I just cleaned the rod and the keys. Um, but this is what you should be expecting. Uh, oh man, and you can see, look, there's actually like another little piece of metal in there. These keys are kind of messed up. Um, I'm going to have to go back through them after this. Um, sorry, I got distracted. I think the binding that's going on in here that I'm feeling, like there's actually like some metal flakes. I'm going to need to lap this, like straighten it out, lap it in and get rid of that stuff. Maybe that's what um, is causing the discoloration. Anyhow, um, that is the bare minimum, I think, of like what a rod should look like when you pull it out of a fresh overhaul or repad. If it's not this clean, then it wasn't cleaned well enough. Um, and that's how I do it. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. It's the way I do it. One thing I don't talk about too much on this channel because it just doesn't really come up, but I'm mostly self-taught, right? So I don't know why like these overhauls look like this. I don't know why it's so common that rods come out dirty. It seems self-evident to me that it should be clean, right? Just like, you know, when you change the oil in your car, like the point of the oil change is to take out the grit and put in clean stuff, right? Um, so cleaning the saxophone and having that oil be as clean as possible means it does its job best, right? Now, self-taught doesn't mean, it's not like, you know, it's in the 1800s and I'm in a village by myself and I literally have nothing to do but look at the saxophone. Like, I'm able to call people, I'm able to talk to people, I'm able to read, but I didn't really have a formal apprenticeship the way, like, some people do and I didn't go to school for it. So, there's some things that I'm missing, right? I don't know if it's normal to not completely disassemble an instrument or if, you know, the status quo of having dirty stuff come out of a fresh overhaul is considered okay by people, but it isn't by me. It's not how I do it. So I figured I'd put this up in case you're wondering, you know, what that can look like, how to clean a rod. It's not hard. It's just a little bit time consuming. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I mean, just to give you another idea, right? Like I haven't cleaned these off yet, but like, Here's the pivot rods, or here, sorry, the pivot screws. Um, they're like this on the whole horn. And I'll make a video on how to clean pivot screws, or at least how I do it. <sighs> but uh, yeah, I've got quite a bit more work left <laughs> for me to do on this freshly overhauled saxophone um, until it plays, you know, closer to like what it should. Plays and feels closer to like what it should. Anyways, hopefully that was helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. Thanks for watching.